Once you fall, the only way is to go back up. Let me ask you something. Would you say that you're confident in yourself? How would others describe their level of confidence in you? One of the things I love most about Haikyuu is its devotion to showcasing players of all levels. Those who are immense in their talents, whether physical, mental, or in technique. Those who play their role, rarely garnering any praise or attention. Those who are average and ordinary. The spectrum of reality that Haikyuu portrays is incredibly nuanced, with characters representing more than just one overarching theme. And as I've mentioned before in my Daichi and Kita videos, I have a soft spot in my heart for the glue guys, the players who don't receive a lot of acclaim for their work, but are still an integral part of their teams nonetheless. See, when I think of the most underrated player on Kurosno, I don't think of Kageyama, whose genius technique and high volleyball IQ enable him to be a first-year starter over the experienced and steady Sugawara. I don't think of Hinata, who despite his short stature and lack of experience, becomes a cornerstone of Kurosno as he shows tremendous growth throughout the series. I don't even think of my favorite character, Daichi, who does all of the little things and serves as one of the team's best receivers alongside Nishinoya, providing consistency, leadership, and mental fortitude for Kurosno. In my opinion, Tanaka Ryunosuke is the most underrated and underappreciated player on Kurosno. Despite being a starter, he rarely receives the praise or the accolades that his teammates do despite providing consistency, wise counsel, limitless energy, and an intimidating presence. Coach Ukai notes at one point that Tanaka has the mental fortitude and power to become Kurosuno's next ace after Asahi. Though I don't believe it was intentional, his consistency throughout the series thematically corresponds with two bits of trivia. He is the only one of the second years to stay with the team through thick and thin, and he is the only Kurosuno starter to have played the full length of every match in the series. Verdate himself noted in the Haikyuu guidebook that his name was Tanaka because he's Tanaka-ish. I tried to give him a really cool name and that ended up being Ryunosuke. At first glance, Furudate's quote seems innocent enough, Tanaka being Japan's fourth most common surname, and then combining that with a sublime first name in Ryunosuke. But on closer inspection, I think the kanji of Tanaka's name says a lot about his role in Haikyuu's overarching narrative, and his incredible emergence into the spotlight in Season 4. I had heard that Season 4 had some moments that let Tanaka shine, and I'm glad to say that I wasn't disappointed. Regarding the kanji of Tanaka's name, his first name, Ryunosuke, has two parts. The first kanji meaning dragon, and the second kanji meaning help or assist. In a phrase format, it could be read or interpreted as assistance of or from a dragon. His last name, Tanaka, is also in two parts. The first kanji meaning rice field, and the second kanji meaning middle. Another interpretation I saw was the phrase dweller in the rice fields. No matter the mythical or cultural impact or representation of the dragon within various cultures, they are often seen as powerful, rare, and often wise creatures. Thus, to receive assistance from a dragon is no small feat. Yet the meaning of his last name, Tanaka, seems to juxtapose his dragon status. After all, rice is a common staple of many Eastern diets, and to be in the middle is often seen as one of the worst places to be, especially on a talent level where being identified as average is often more of an insult than a compliment in most contexts. Just one grain of rice in a rice field. Yet still, the kanji of Tanaka's first and last name concisely define and detail his journey through Haikyuu as an underrated gem even within Haikyuu's terrific cast of characters. Despite his somewhat plain appearance, simple and hot-headed nature, and average skill, Tanaka's role on Kurosuno and representation in the overall plot of Haikyuu cannot be understated. Inoshita says it himself, I always think he's an idiot, but in reality, he's actually sort of amazing. Tanaka is one of the three Kurosuno members that are seen in the first episode, the other two being Suga and Daichi. Though his time with Kageyama and Hinata isn't given a lot of spotlight or focus, Tanaka is one of the best senpai a new member could ask for. He willingly volunteers his time in allowing them to use the gym at 5 a.m. during the entire week prior to the 3-on-3, despite the fact that he could get in immense trouble. 
He practices with them, helps clean up, and in my opinion does more than any normal upperclassman or senpai would be expected to. In Season 3, Tanaka puts it best. It's a senpai's job to always be there and help his precious juniors. Tanaka wasn't solely responsible for Hinata and Kageyama's ascension, but he did play an integral part in helping them to improve, as any good senpai should. For example, when Hinata serves into Kageyama's head during their practice match with Alba Josai, Hinata is called out by Tanaka. No doubt anticipating a scolding for losing their first set, Hinata sputters out a nervous response. He doesn't want to be benched, he wants to be in a match until the end. And how does Senpai respond? Tanaka opens Hinata's eyes with a key piece of wisdom. That yes, Hinata may suck. And yes, Hinata may be a nuisance. And yes, Hinata may slow them down. But that's what the team and what his senpais are for. After all, everyone on this side of the net is your ally. This and countless moments throughout the series where Tanaka goes above and beyond an ideal senpai and teammate are unnoticed. From revitalizing the team's morale during Kurosno's first matchup with Alba Josai, to managing to convince his older sister to drive Kageyama and Hinata to the Tokyo training camp, to consistently encouraging his teammates and pushing himself, to doing his best to encourage Hinata even though he wasn't invited to the All Japan Youth Camp. When the second part of Season 4 aired, and especially the episodes focused on Tanaka. His name was trending on Twitter, and for good reason. For once, Senpai finally received the spotlight that he so thusly deserved. Throughout the series, Tanaka is seen as a solid player. He's decent at receiving, good at spiking, and has a boisterous attitude. But what else? Haikyuu highlights the efforts of many characters, but it does an especially impressive job in foreshadowing and challenging the growth of supporting characters that may not have their efforts noticed. Early on in Season 2 at the Tokyo training camp, Tanaka watches as Bokuto hits a cross shot, and I imagine he thought to himself, Man, I'd love to hit a cross shot myself. Thus, throughout the first half of Season 4, Tanaka is shown practicing his cross, and especially so in their practice match against Date Tech. In fact, there's this one moment where he leaps for a spike positioned for a cross, and he hits a straight that is out. It is a very brief moment, but it certainly sets the stage for the Inarazaki vs. Kurosno match, where Tanaka lives up to the dragon in his name. Inarazaki's coaches tell their players to focus on going after Tanaka since he hasn't made any spectacular plays, and even spectators comment on how Tanaka doesn't stand out at all, with his only notable trait being his energetic attitude. Tanaka even tells himself that everyone aiming for me is nothing new, as Atsumu targets him directly. The middle blocker Omimi comments to himself that Tanaka is nothing more than a poor man's version of Bokuto. I think just about everyone has gone through this line of thinking at some point. When you make mistakes, and especially repeated mistakes, when people are counting on you and you can't seem to meet their expectations, it begins to create initial doubt that can affect reality that maybe I'm not so good at the thing I'm doing. That maybe I'm nothing but... average. Or maybe even less so. Those roadblocks come to a head in Season 4, where for the first time, we are given a look into Tanaka's psyche, and the journey that has brought him to this point. Mental roadblocks are difficult for anyone, regardless of their talent level. And this is brilliantly shown in Haikyuu through characters like Yamaguchi, Tsukushima, Oikawa, Inoshita, Kageyama, and especially in Tanaka. Up until that point, there were some small signs that perhaps Tanaka was hitting mental roadblocks despite his mindset, especially when it came to facing both Alba Josai and Shiratorizawa. But never had he been backed into a corner. That is, of course, until the Inarazaki vs. Kurosno match. For players who aren't stars, there are only really two ways to be noticed on the court by the crowd. One, having an abnormally magnificent performance, and two, making mistakes or being picked on by the opposing team because of their weaknesses, which no doubt draws the ire and jeers of the crowd. I see this all the time in basketball, and especially in the NBA playoffs where players who are weaker on defense are targeted to get a favorable matchup. If an opponent manages to shatter a player's mindset and self-confidence, it has an overwhelming effect on the performance of a player and their teammates. 
Maybe their teammates stop passing to them, or the player hesitates more often, or passes up the ball immediately. The effect of having a shattered mental psyche can almost be unnoticed by the affected player as they spiral. And as Tanaka is blocked repeatedly, watches his teammates play well, is targeted by Inarazaki's serves, and misses repeated spikes, the doubt and self-deprecation begins to creep in. That he's nothing but lame, that he hasn't contributed anything to the match, and that he isn't reliable after all. Even though Tanaka appears to be a quote-unquote average player, he possesses traits that are difficult to find in anyone. An iron will, immense self-confidence, the fact that his teammates always have confidence in his mental state and ability to bounce back, and the fact that he knows himself. Players tell one another don't mind or on to the next one all the time in the show. Whether they score, make a good receive, miss a receive, score a service ace, win the game, lose the game. Well, that's in the past. That was yesterday. I don't know about you, but the visual representation of climbing a pair of unending stairs only to come to a halt in front of a massive mountain is often what it feels like to face a seemingly insurmountable challenge. With the chance to end the first set, it is telling that despite being blocked out multiple times and being in a bit of a mental rut, Kageyama sets to him with the full confidence that he'll score. And the awesome part? Tanaka was going to call for it all along, regardless of if the ball was actually set to him. And the payoff is tremendous, with the swell of the music, the cheers of the crowd and his teammates, and Tanaka has his moment. All of those times of being blocked, all of those times of missing the cross in practice, finally comes to a wondrous crescendo. As the match goes on, Tanaka is a cornerstone for Kurosuno. Narazaki certainly tries a few more times to break him, but the cross shot gives him new life. It's to the point where even the ever-boisterous Tanaka is able to assess himself, swallow his pride, and ask for less sets from Kageyama for a time. It's Kageyama's nature that Tanaka understands later, that no, the Sether wasn't trying to make him feel better by telling him, we need your attacks. No, the comment and the corresponding set from the Serene King is a threat to Narazaki, and a challenge to Tanaka himself. Show them why I have faith in you. There really is no feeling quite like accepting the trust the others put in you, and delivering on it. Sure, Tanaka may not be the strongest spiker on Kurosuno, he may not be the strongest blocker or decoy, and he may not be the best receiver. But to know those things about himself, and yet still strive for constant improvement and growth? To still continue looking forward? I think that's something to be admired and sought after. Above being the most athletic, the most intelligent, or the most talented. Even if you are considered to be quote-unquote average. If you have confidence in yourself, and others have confidence in you, what more do you need? That even the common, average, ordinary human beings like you and I have something to bring to the table after all. Even more than we could possibly imagine or hope for. That if you and I look into the rice field, the mundane, the average, the ordinary, we'll be surprised at what we find. Who knows? We might find a dragon. Thank you for watching this long-awaited video on Tanaka. He was actually one of the more difficult characters to make a video for, and I had writer's block several times. Huge thank you to all of you who made it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, consider giving me a subscription, a like, or comment below what you think of Tanaka or of Haikyuu. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have a great week, and I'll see you all again very soon.